Welcome to the Endless Knot. Today I'm unboxing a dictionary of Proto-Indo-European roots. So let's open this up. As you can see, there are actually two books in here. I also ordered this very short introduction to dictionaries by Linda Mugglestone. So I just stuck that in with my order. I may mention that in future videos or some of the ideas from this. I'll give good history about dictionaries and lexicography. But this is the main thing. Let's get the box out of the way. So here it is, the American Heritage Dictionary of Indo-European Roots by Calvert Watkins, third edition. So it's a nice lightweight trade size soft cover book, which means it's just a lot easier to, to use than the appendix at the back of the American Heritage Dictionary. And as you can maybe see from the table of contents here, there's a preface, there's some introductory essays about uh, the Indo-European language and what we know about the Indo-Europeans themselves, and some information about how to use the dictionary. Then the the dictionary itself, all the uh, Indo-European roots listed um, in alphabetical order by root. But then, so that you can find things the other way around, at the back is an index alphabetized by English derivative, and the root that it comes from, you can then go and find that root in the main part of the dictionary. And then at the end, a few other useful tables. So Indo-European sound correspondences between the phonology of Indo-European, reconstructed phonology. Um, so what Indo-European sound corresponds to what sound in the earliest uh, recorded forms of the different branches uh, of Indo-European languages. And also a nice little chart of the Indo-European family of languages. It's a nice kind of circular arrangement for that. Uh, there are also illustrations, as you can see uh, in the preface here, black and white images, artifacts that demonstrate something about the Indo-European culture. Guide to the dictionary itself, so it talks a little bit about some of the uh, principles of reconstructing uh, Indo Proto-Indo-European, the different sound changes and so forth. So as for the dictionary itself, this dictionary includes not only the Indo-European roots included in the appendix to the American Heritage Dictionary, there are additional forms in here that are not in that other resource. So even if you have the American Heritage Dictionary, this is still a very useful and important uh, book to, to consult. So it's important to note that the Indo-European roots included in this dictionary are only the ones that make it into English. So there are some Proto-Indo-European roots that have been constructed on the basis of evidence from other languages, other Indo-European languages. They won't be included in this, in this dictionary. This dictionary is, is specifically geared towards studying the uh, earliest sources of English vocabulary. And of course, these are roots, the roots of English vocabulary that comes from Indo-European, not from other sources. So there is a significant amount of, of vocabulary in English that may come from sources outside of Proto-Indo-European. Those would not be included in, in this dictionary. You would have to look at other etymological tools for that. So the way that it's arranged, any given entry will, will start off giving you the basic sense of the Proto-Indo-European word. So for instance, let's, let's look at an example here. Arg, A-R-G, is the root. It gives you the basic sense of that word in uh, Indo-European, to shine, white, the shining or white metal, silver. This is where we get a number of English uh, derivatives. After that basic sense, then, we're given the older form, uh, so it gives us reconstructed forms of that Proto-Indo-European root. And then after that, it gives us, in sort of numbered categories, the different forms that that root takes on due to various sound changes or suffixes that might be added to the root. So numbered one, two, three, four. And along with each of those derived forms, each section gives the English, the modern English derivative that comes from that. And then at the end of each entry, there's a cross-reference in square brackets at the end, 
So it gives a reference to Picorni, who wrote what is still the most authoritative Proto-Indo-European dictionary, which is much more geared towards the specialist, not the sort of thing that, that the casual reader would necessarily be looking at. But it's very handy, therefore, to have a cross-reference to that, that larger work, uh, so that if you want to look further into any given root, you can, you can follow that up. Interspersed in the dictionary are language and culture notes separated out uh, as you can see in this example here by these horizontal bars, which gives a bit more sort of discussion of what we might be able to tell about the language or the culture of the Indo-Europeans on the basis of any given root. So just a little bit more discursive information in these sections, and there seems to be uh, quite a few of them. So the format of this dictionary is very appropriate to even the non-specialist. You don't need to have a lot of linguistic expertise, either in historical linguistics of Indo-European or linguistics in general, to really be able to use this book. The few basic concepts that you might want to know are fully explained in the prefatory material in very clear and straightforward terms. And for the most part, you can simply browse through the book, through the different routes, and just read what's there and see how things are related. I think this is perfectly accessible to anyone who is interested in, in language history. So you get a lot of etymological bang for your buck with this book. I would highly recommend this to anyone who, who does have an interest in etymology and, and how words are related. Even if you do, as I say, even if you do own the full American Heritage Dictionary, this is worth picking up as a, an additional resource, if for no other reason than uh, all the uh, additional roots that are included here that aren't there. Certainly if you're just looking for a small etymological book, this is a good one to to play around with. As I say, it's it's quite fun to find unexpected relationships between modern English words that maybe don't look like they're related. And surprise, surprise, if you go back far enough, they come from the, the same root in Indo-European. So highly recommended, and I'm glad I've picked up uh, a copy of the of this separate volume. I'm sure I'm gonna find lots of interesting new facts from this. I'll be back soon with more etymological explorations and cultural connections, so please subscribe to this channel. You can also sign up for email notifications of new videos in the description below. If you have comments or questions, I'm at Alliterative on Twitter, or leave them in the comment section. You can also read more of my thoughts on my blog at alliterative.net.